the uh, Minneapolis uh, group, Dr. Winter, uh, reported on uh, AP procedures in 37 patients. And they had what I want to emphasize here is a fairly high rate of nerve root deficits. The majority of these were temporary and uh, um, miscellaneous complications, and they recommend diffusing the entire index curvature. Uh, Dr. Bradford and Boachi spoke about or uh, wrote about uh, this approach in seven patients without any neurological deficits, and in a subsequent paper, uh, it was deemed to be safe to uh, address hemivertebra ab above the uh, lumbosacral junction. So here's an illustration of the posture approach. Um, not the best quality image, but here we take out the hemilamina. Here's the, the ligamentum flavum, sort of come around this, take the uh, transverse process down, we subperiosteally dissect on the lateral aspect of this, take the disc above and below. Here we're taking the pedicle down and then remove the fragment from here. And I, I have another picture from the roof article that maybe shows this better. And here you can see, here's the, the hemivertebra with a contralateral bar which requires osteotomy. So, uh, but you can really shell this out very nicely and uh, using osteotomes or eggshell or however you do it, uh, take that out and, and use that for bone graft as well. And here's uh, an illustration, again, through the same authors of uh, removing this and taking the, the pedicle of the hemi and then extracting that. Do you use a bird? I don't. I take an osteotome. Tom Errico in New York likes to use the diamond tip burr for resections in general. He feels that there's less bleeding with it, but I think it, you don't have a bone and, uh, that you can use, and, and I just think you, you can use a bone graft, and there's an element that catches it. It can shift around, and I never had a problem using one for specific. You don't use your bone graft, but I just stay up using the burr. Me too. Because you can't teach the burr. There's no fellow or resident in the world that I ever had brain injury from burr. Right. I agree. Uh, okay, so some pictures now. So cases, this is a three and a half year old girl or so. She was followed by a colleague, braced, and he asked me to help him on this case. So we decided to do both of these. Uh, uh, here she is in a brace and here she is out of the brace. And she just, he followed her very closely over years and there was progression. So we, we decided to, after the appropriate imaging, to take care of this. Uh, he likes to put these little uh, needles in to, to uh, mark the anatomy. And I think it's a good idea, so we really had a clear understanding of the anatomy. Here's the hemi, I believe, here. I don't have a good view. Maybe it's here. And um, uh, we put a temporizing rod on this side and locked it in place, and we're sort of uh, dissecting around this, coming out uh, with a freer elevator laterally, the disc uh, uh, on one side and then on the other side here, the pedicle has already been taken down. Uh, and there's the, the hemivertebra uh, removed. And there's the uh, cavity that we've left behind here. And then we put the second rod on. We've loosened uh, the first uh, stabilizing rod and then uh, comp locked here and then just compressed down on this and close it up uh, as the technique uh, indicates. So uh, we get a nice correction doing that. And in this particular case, we did the two levels. And uh, I don't have long-term follow-up, but at least over the first uh, year and a half or two, she did pretty well. But there's, a, I think, a fairly significant possibility of, of kind of adding on or secondary compensatory curves progressing, particularly in the very young patients, and they really need to be watched very carefully. Here's a, a six-year-old girl with a, uh, a thoracal lumbar junction, hemi, hemi, and we handled it with uh, this. Um, and here's the posterior approach. Uh, so uh, as Jim's point, uh, there is no effect on uh, growth of the fused vertebra, and in particular the spinal canal, so they don't become stenotic, uh, the young children between age one and six after pedicle screw instrumentation. Uh, here's a three-year-old boy with a fairly significant uh, kyphosis failure of uh, segmentation, and we got that corrected nicely. Here's a 20-month-old boy. 
And uh, this is one that you, you use the, the sublaminar, uh, the galley kind of. Uh, so uh, I don't even, we didn't even resect uh, the hemi. I did take the pedicle off and I kind of did a, a posture intersegmental, just facetectomy kind of approach. And we corrected it with pedicle screws. And over time, over at least two years, that actually corrected further sort of uh, posterior hemiopiphysiodesis, or, yeah. Uh, here's a girl that I operated on a few weeks ago. I uh, was visiting uh, Albacete, which is a town between Barcelona and Madrid. And uh, she's a 19-year-old Bolivian girl who lives there and who had a congenital a failure of, a, of segmentation and a contralateral hemivertebra, or posterior-based hemivertebra. And we did, a, and that's her deformity very rigid angular deformity. Uh, she was neurologically intact, but she had this progressive uh, focal kyphosis. And we, it's, the images are not good because this is about a week out, but um, we basically resected this and put a cage in off on the back. And so had to cut through the uh, bar. So it's really a vertebral column resection, but she's got a real nice uh, clinical result early. Uh, I asked my research assistant just to take a peek at some of our cases and, and take a look at the complications and et cetera. So over a number of years, uh, we've done 23 or so. Uh, I didn't go over the cases with her, so I think it's 23. could be a little bit more. And the age uh, was 12 from 1.7 years to 32. Operative time, uh, a little more than a, a four hours average. Uh, a liter of blood loss, a curve magnitudes 48 degrees to 19 degrees, and we improved coronal balance in these patients. But we had some complications. Uh, there was one patient with a conus level, a unilateral deficit, partially improved, and this was one in which she had a hemivertebra and a bar associated with it. And I think with the closing of this, there was some kinking of the conus at that level, and we went back and decompressed it. But she didn't fully recover. Uh, one CSF leak, uh, uh, one reintubation, a pseudarthrosis, a wound infection. A secondary curve progression occurred in two uh, patients that uh, are currently being braced, and an SMA syndrome in one patient. Um, here's a, one of those cases in which uh, this girl was about four or five when I operated on her, and we've got a decent correction but she already had this here above at the thoracolumbar junction. It sort of progressed, so she's in a brace right now and it's at the time. Uh, this is a kid with that, you know, like the shoulder clunking in. And, you know, it's this, that was this case, and that seven, eight, I think I have eight or nine-year follow-up on this point. He's just held straight like that. Uh, here is a patient in which uh, the pedicles were not very... Uh, present here, so we did an upside down hybrid, screws at the top and hooks here, and, and she got a nice balanced correction. This is a girl that had the SMA syndrome that uh, resolved with uh, uh, per, uh, enteral feeding tubes and, and, and rest and time. Um, Jim, you showed a case earlier in which you did this. You took the hemivertebra out at the, at the apex here, but I, in this case, she was really shifted off to the left. so. We did just a lumbosacral hemi excision on that side, a T lift, compressed down, and just uh, I fused up to here. She's nice and level. She has a little bit of a residual curve, but she's skeletally mature, and she's held up uh, over time. And this is a boy that I did a, uh, an anterior posture approach and unilateral screw fixation, uh, but years down the line, he the curve up above here, which didn't amount to much early on, did progress, and we, we uh, fixed that later. And he's about uh, 10 years out. So in conclusion, uh, these can be progressive. The fully segmented ones are, are ideal. They're the most straightforward to address. Uh, the early excision uh, given progression is optimal and I think gives a predictable correction, although we do have to observe and watch these patients uh, out far enough till they reach skeletal maturity to be sure that secondary curves uh, do not arise or are not progressive and uh, that adding on doesn't occur. Thank you.